In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to mix two textures together with texture painting. So what we're going to be doing is mixing together this moss texture and this dirt texture. We'll be mixing it on a plane and then we'll be texture painting where we want the moss to be and where we want the dirt to be. And this can especially be useful for ground textures to kind of disperse up the pattern. You could also use this if you have a large scale environment and you want to mix between like some patchy areas where there's rocks or grass or dirt or sand, but it can also be used for really any object or material. Now, if you want to follow along using the exact same textures that I'm using, then I'm going to be downloading this Ground 001 from Ambient CG. And I'll just download the 4K JPEG version. And then for the moss, I'm going to be downloading this Moss 002. And so again, this is on Ambient CG, and I'm going to download the 4K JPEG version. And also, I'll have a link in the video description to Ambient CG's Patreon page if you're interested in supporting them, because they make really great high-quality textures. So if you're interested, I'll leave their Patreon page in the description. So here in a new scene in Blender, I'm just going to select everything, and we're just going to delete everything. Let's go to the Add menu, and I'm just going to add a new plane. And I'm going to scale the plane up by 5, so hit S, and then type 5, and N. Enter, and I'll hit Control A and just apply the scale. So now let's go over here to the shading workspace and I'm going to click on new to add a new material and then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on. If you don't have that enabled you can click on edit, you can go to the preferences and over here in the preferences if you go to the add-ons tab and search for node you can just enable the node wrangler add-on so you can close the user preferences. So with the principled shader selected you can hit Control shift T. So I'm first going to be going in the folder with the ground textures and I'm going to select the color and then hold down the control key and select the roughness and the normal gel. So with those three maps selected click on principal texture setup let's go into the rendered view to see how this is looking actually we'll just go into the material preview so we can see that with some lighting already set up now you can see the texture is a little bit stretched so let's go to top view by hitting seven on numpad and we'll go into edit mode and i'm going to hit u and we're going to click on the unwrap project from view. So now it's not stretched. Now if we go over here to the mapping, I can take the mapping scale and I can turn up the X, Y, and Z values to three. So that's a little bit bigger. So now what I'm going to do is select this principled shader. I'll hit shift D to duplicate it and I'll control shift select the principled shader so we can preview it. And then let's also drag it up a little bit farther so we have more space. And then I'll do the same thing. So with the principled selected, I'll hit control shift T. And this time I'm going to go inside the moss folder. So again, link is in the description if you want to download it and I'll select the color hold down the control key and the normal GL and roughness and click on principled texture setup. And then for this texture as well, I'm going to turn the scale values to three. So change them to three on the X, Y, and Z on the mapping. So it's a bit smaller. So now what I want to do is mix both of these textures together. So to do this, I can search for the mix shader. Let's drop the mix shader here and I'll control shift select the mix shader to preview it. And what I can do is put the top one, the top BSDF here into the shader and then this one here into the other shader. So now if we wait for this to load up, if I drag the factor around, it's going to blend between only using the dirt at one or only using the moss at zero. But what I want to do instead is have some spots which are dirt and some spots which are moss. So what we need to do is create a mask and put the mask into the factor. So I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for image texture, drop this here, and we're going to click on new to create a new image texture. Now here on the width and height, I want to make it 4K so it's higher quality. So I'm going to go with 4096 by 4096 and I can just call this mask. And also here on the color, I'm going to make the color fully white and then it'll be painting black. And then I will click on new image. So now this color here can go into the factor. So we'll wait for this to load up and you can see now it's all dirt. And so now what we can do is we can paint black and then that's where the moss is going to show up. However, because we're going to be texture painting this, we need to make sure we UV unwrap it. And right now the object only has one UV map, but you can see that these textures are already using the UV map. So if I like re UV unwrap this, it would move around where the texture is. Now that may not be a problem for your scene, but I'm just going to show you how to create a separate UV map just in case you have some sort of complicated setup with a UV map and you just want to create a new UV map to not mess up the previous UV map that the other textures are using. So if you do want to create a new UV map you can go here to the object data properties and you can open up the UV maps and then you can click on the plus here to create a new UV map and I'm just going to rename this to UV map mask. So now what I want to do is search for the UV map node. So go shift A, search for UV map, drop this here, and the UV can go into the vector. So now what we can do is we can click here on the drop down and we can choose the UV map mask. Now these textures, these textures are still going to use the first UV map because that's the default one. And you can see here there is this camera icon. And whichever camera icon is selected, that's going to be the active one, or it's going to be the default UV map. And so because of this texture coordinate set to UV, it's just going to use whichever one is default. So make sure 
sure the camera icon has the UV map selected. So now what I want to do is UV unwrap the new UV map. So what I'm going to do is go here to the UV editing workspace and I'm going to scroll over here and I'm going to click here on UV map and I'm going to make sure I choose the UV map mask. So this is the new one that we created. So now what I can do is just hit U and we're just going to unwrap angle based. And you can see now for a plane like this, it just unwrapped it nicely. So it's just filling up all the texture space. So now what we can do is click here to go to the texture painting workspace. And I'm going to drag this panel here really small because I want to see this in the full screen. Now I'm going to choose the paint soft brush because I think the paint soft brush is good for this. Let's also go into the material preview so we can see the material. Now here on the color, if I click here on this kind of orangey color, I'm going to make it fully black and that way we can paint black and that's where the other texture is going to show up. So if I just start to click here and drag around, you can see already the other texture showing up. So now we have bits of moss. However, this doesn't really look that nice because it's like really sharp on the edges. There isn't any noise or blending and it just doesn't look organic. So I'm going to be adding a texture here into the brush that we're using to make it kind of textured on the edges and make it look more natural and organic. So let's go here to the texture. So open this up. You want to click right here on the active tool and workspace settings and then scroll down here. We're going to add a new texture. We're going to click on new. We're going to click on this button here, which is going to go to the texturing tab. And then here on image or movie, we want to change this to clouds instead. And this is basically Blender's procedural noise texture. Now here on the size, I'm going to turn this to a 0.2. And here on the depth, I'm going to turn this up to the max of 30. So type in 30. Now what I'm also going to do is open up the colors here. And then I'm going to click on color ramp and open up this color ramp. And let's close the clouds here make this smaller so I can see it better. So why I'm using this color ramp setting right here is because I want to make it more contrasted because right now it's just like really gray and I want to make it more sharp so you can actually see it showing up. So if I click on the black tab and then click here on the color to change this, what I want to do is turn up the alpha so that it's fully black and fully white with no alpha. But now what I'm going to do is drag these tabs together and you can see if I drag them together, they're going to be more contrasted. So let's now click on this button here to go back to the active tool and workspace settings. Then I'm going to scroll down here. Now I want the texture to be kind of random so that as I'm painting, it looks random. So on the mapping here, instead of view plane, I'm going to change this to a random and that will randomize the texture every time I paint. Now we're going to scroll right up here to the blend and instead of mix, I'm going to change this to a multiply instead. So I can now just click along here to start to paint and you can see the moss is showing up, but we're not seeing that noise. Now we made the texture a fully white texture and so we want to paint black so that the moss will show up. However, in this case, we actually want to make the color fully white. So change the color to fully white and of course the blend here is set to multiply. So now when I start to paint here, let me just press F to make my brush bigger. Now you can see here on the texture we're painting painting and it's just kind of showing up in that pattern. And I do think that the texture is a little bit too sharp. So if I click here to go to the texturing tab, let's just scroll down here to color ramp and I'm just going to drag the color ramp tabs just back a little bit. So now I can just start to paint here and you can see we're adding the moss, but it's adding it in a noisy pattern. So now let's say that I've added a spot here and there's just way too much moss and I don't want that much moss. Well, what I can do is take the multiply here on the blend type and I can change it to lighten instead. Now, if I just paint along here, we're going to basically erase it. So you can change it to lighten to erase it, but then you can change it back to multiply if you want to add more color. So now I can just paint all along here and paint little patches of moss and it definitely makes the ground look a lot more interesting and it breaks up the pattern. So once you're done texture painting, you want to save this image. So over here, if you open up this panel here, you want to click on image and click on save as. And I'm just going to save this in the folder with my project files as mass.png. You can save it as a PNG or a JPEG. I'll save it as a PNG and save that image. So that way, when you close Blender, Blender won't lose the texture data because you've saved out the image on your computer. So we can just click back here to go to the shading workspace to see the finished texture. And then of course, if you want to edit any of the textures, this texture here here are the moss textures and this texture here are the dirt textures. So for example, I could just search for like RGB curves and drop it here between the base color and the principled. And so now I could like make the color darker, but you can see it's just going to make the dirt darker because this here is the dirt textures. I could also make like the bump stronger by turning up the strength there to make the dirt look more bumpy. And it doesn't just work for ground objects. You can also do it for really any objects that you want to mix two materials together. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.